No way. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a very special guest. This is Mitchell Schwartz. He's an all-pro offensive lineman for, coincidentally, my favorite NFL team, the Kansas City Chiefs. Retired back in 2020. Today we're going to be playing nine holes. Mitchell is going to hopefully answer nine questions. We're at a beautiful Shadow Glen Golf Club, the number one course in Kansas City. I know you can't tell because Mitchell's wearing shorts, but it is about 40 degrees outside, and I'm very cold, but I think Mitchell's a little more adjusted than I am. Let's get into it. We'll flip a tee, see who's going to go first. It's gonna be me. Kind of just a little layup here, trying to hit something about 240. So I'm hitting a five wood. The one thing about this golf course is you really want to be in the fairway. <laughs> or just a 260 yard draw. And that's in the fairway. Perfect. Just aiming for the bunker. Ooh. If that had flown about five feet higher, that would have sprinted down the fairway. First hole, first question. The average career for an offensive lineman in the NFL is 3.83 years. Played a whole lot more than that. And at one point, you had the longest active snap streak in the NFL. It's 7,894. We won't talk about that 7,894th snap. What do you think allowed you to have such a long career in the NFL? So, like, it's luck, right? Like, sure. You have to be lucky that a pile of people don't fall on you. So I tried to make it so I was never too out of shape because I feel like that's when you get hurt. My brother, you know, same genes, he played about the same time and he had a crazy injury history. I don't think we necessarily prepared much differently. You know, I just got lucky with genetics and with kind of the way people fell on the field. I would have never, I would have never guessed that you know, you consider not getting injured just pure luck. That's, that's actually very well, it's, interesting. I mean, I did get injured eventually, that's the thing. Same result. All right, let's try to just be smooth and not rush it and do that. That is so pure. Great shot. Third time's the charm. That would be one heck of a par. Let's knock that in. You just mentioned off camera. Those are the shots that keep you coming back. Like that's the feeling that makes you want to keep playing golf. Is there a feeling comparable to that playing in the NFL? I was more technique based okay. because of my barely sub 5 five forty. Uh, which I feel like in the golf world is maybe better with like your wedges and your short game. So for me, like I took more pleasure in defeating guys by skill than necessarily like by physical prowess, which I feel like is the guys who are it's awesome with so the short game. It's so funny to hear you say that when I, I shook your hand and I couldn't get it around your palm. You're talking about how you don't have the physical prowess of other guys. I don't want to meet these guys in the NFL that have the physical prowess because I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be scared. Also, you can clean that ball if you'd like. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. 77 yards here, a little uphill. I'm just gonna hit like an 85 yard shot. I'd love to start off with a birdie, that would feel good. Hmm. Should be pretty good. If we got the yardage right. Look like it. I rip drivers all day, like when I hit a good wedge. That gets me going. Would you chip this, given this, or no? No. 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 If you can putt it, putt it. Mm. Yeah, a little slower than we thought, but we got about a six footer here. Um, greens are just a little, you know, they just got punched. Gonna play this thing right edge. Just trickle in over the front. Oh. We'll take it. All right, nice that's, start. That's a good feeling right there. Hmm. Looks like it took a bit of a kick to the right, right off the face. I always, I always laughed about this bunker. I'd, every time we tee off here, I'd say, hey guys, don't hit it in that bunker right there. But it's a framing bunker, meaning if you hit it directly over that bunker, you're going to be in the fairway. It's there for like an, as like an aiming point. Really? Yeah. All right, just gonna hit a little cut here, start it over kind of the left center of that framing bunker that we just talked about. Uh, it's a bit of a block. It should still be fairway though. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> That'll work. That is a seed. Great shot. All right, thanks. All right, hole number two, question number two. 
you won uh, a Super Bowl in 2019 with the Kansas City Chiefs. You also were an all-pro offensive lineman in 2018. I know these are very different accomplishments, but which one are you more proud of? Which one do you like hold closer to your heart? The Super Bowl, for sure. I didn't realize how much the Super Bowl would mean until we won it, which sounds maybe dumb to say, because it's the thing you aspire to and the thing that like you make your goal. But like, it's literally like a life-changing thing. You know, it oh, yeah, was it the thing that like solidified that we're gonna stay in Kansas City, like this is our home. You grew up in California, but you stuck around in Kansas City, and I was gonna ask why, but now that makes sense. Well, I mean, it's it just felt like home. Like, it yeah. felt like the right place to be. You know, neither of us are, from here, but we just felt that we love the city, um, the people, just felt like a connection bigger than just like us choosing a city to live in. And oh, hang on. I see it. Is it just right of the green? Yeah. So I got 162 to cover the bunker, 177 to the flag. Probably gonna jump a little bit, so I'm just gonna take a nine iron, try to get something like barely over the bunker. Leave myself a birdie putt. Damn, I mean, distance, bang on. Got the yardage right, but I'm just gonna let the club face shut down. We'll take an eagle putt. I'm not gonna complain too much <laughs> about that. You know what Scott Fawcett says about chip shots? Uh, put it on the green and two putt. Or, or just hit one chip. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's uh, something my coach used to say, don't chip twice. I know that isn't the most satisfying shot to hit, but if you're trying to score, that's what you do. Yeah. Because now you have a chance to make a putt. We've got about a 30-some footer here. It'd be cool to make this for Eagle, obviously, but our main goal here is to just put this close and guarantee a birdie. That is so much slower than I thought it was going to be. It's still tapping. But we'll take a tap in for birdie. Nice. Thank you. Birdie, birdie start. Birdie, birdie start. All right. Those those aren't bad. I'm the single worst ball liner upper of all time. You want my advice? Don't. Use the shaft of your putter. So the edge of the shaft of your putter, line yeah, it up. Yeah, do one of these. Yep. Oh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That was a huge bump. I almost want to let you re-hit that. That was so unlucky. <laughs> no, it's good. That's the thing I probably don't do that you do is I don't like look at all those spots in the way and like. It's just a force of habit at this point. When you're hitting putts that are worth a couple thousand dollars, it's. I know that for, for you that might not mean a whole lot, but for me that's. They're not worth that today? Not worth a couple grand? <laughs> if I miss a two footer, I can clickbait it. Missing short putts is valuable right now. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> All right. So you're drafted 37th overall by the Browns. Mel Kuyper called you the key pick of the draft for the Browns, which is pretty sick. And this means that you got to play five seasons with Joe Thomas, widely regarded as the best offensive lineman of all time. Through working with him and being alongside one of the greats, was there anything that you learned from him about what it takes to be like one of the best in the business at what you do? So Joe taught me preparation in terms of how to like study guys um you know the story i like to tell is we were facing baltimore and we were going up against uh you know terrell suggs paul kruger and i would ask him hey did you see you know kruger do this move did you see him do that move he goes no and i'm like are you just not watching them like what's the deal he goes no i only watch them on my side i was like really uh because you know some guys play both sides and i thought about that and i realized like that makes a lot of sense because say I'm charting both sides and I'm charting them equally and you like to do a spin move. Yep. If you only spin like to your right against yep. me, that's an inside spin against him. That's an outside spin. Yes. So if I'm charting that and I'm watching every rush, I would say that 50% of the time he spins inside 50% he spins outside. But as a right tackle, I'm seeing hundred percent inside spin. Interesting. So the combination of like study the guy and the moves he does on your side and then also chart them out so that you have like data you can look at after and see the quantity of how often they do the moves and then you also know the quality of those moves. Because if he's only going to spin once or twice a game, it might be a really good move. Is it worth on the 28 other pass rush reps to overplay the spin at the detriment of the speed move he's going to do 18 times? 
probably not. I don't know what Scott Fawcett would say, but you know, probably not. You want to play the percentages, which is this is the thing he does most often. This is what I'm going to take away. Yeah. I'm going to try to force him to be me with something else. And how did that differ from prepping in college? Because I know you were you were probably considerably better as compared to your peers in college than you are you are in the NFL. Yeah. So, so was the preparation different in that way? It wasn't necessarily different. Like I knew to watch guys kind of know their rushes. I think the thing of charting down every single rush and quantifying it and like seeing it on paper as opposed to just watching a bunch of film and like, yeah, I have a feeling he likes to do this or he has all these moves, but I don't know exactly how often they do it. Um, but just being a little more precise so that you can actually like create a game plan for that guy. Cause that was the other thing. I mean, Joe was good enough to do it, but you know, you just said you're going to hit a draw three wood, um, you know, for a beginner golfer like me, I'm just going to hit a three wood and hope okay. it gets on the fairway where you can be more precise about what you're exactly doing. In college, it's like, I'm just going to block the guy. Okay. My technique's going to work. Yeah. In the NFL, once you get better, it's like, I'm going to use this specific technique to take away those rushes he just uh, showed on, on tape. No, I'm learning so much about football right now because I, <laughs> I love watching football, but I don't know anything about it. And now after doing this interview, I'm going to be a much more knowledgeable football watcher and probably way more annoying to the people I'm watching football with. As you should be. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want me to get to the golf cart and I really wanted to get to the golf cart. How long would it take me to get there with you trying to stop me? These days you'd get there in four seconds because you just get, make that arc and I wouldn't be okay. able to fast enough to, <laughs> to get there. If it was a rule that you had to be in a certain position, uh, it would take you a little bit longer. All right, just a little draw three wood here. I'm gonna start it kind of at the right edge of that bunker, or left edge of that bunker on the right. Try to get it to ride the wind, draw in there. Or zero draw whatsoever. Oh no. Oh, you're good. If it dodges the bunker, we're gonna be in a good spot. Yeah, I think you're like edge of the fairway. Oh. Hang on. No wind. Sit a little. Uh, it depends on the kick, but I think you should be just fine. Yeah. <laughs> that is so good. What a golf shot. All right, that works. Good work. <laughs> good stuff there. Thanks. I'm going to use a 54 degree because it's got a little more bounce. Uh, my 58 degree has four degrees of bounce, which is basically zero. Land it between the bunker and the flag. Hope it stops. That came out hot. Sit ball. You know, I gotta be honest with you. I'm fine with that. That's a scary golf shot. I'm gonna try to hit kind of a higher shot. Get to land here and trundle out. Oh, that's oh, awesome. Oh, wow. That's so slow. Well, we got a little work to do to par. <clears throat> it's just hard to get it there with these. Cause, so I, we've played a good amount of golf out here, or I've played a good amount of golf out here, and these greens are normally lightning fast. Great par. <laughs> wow. One of those days, I think. That is my putting goal for this year is it's not to like make the putt it's just when you're standing over it like just start it on the line with the right speed and just let whatever happens happen we call that making the putt yeah. when you hold the putt is when it goes in you want to make every putt if you hold it that's not really it's not up to you i like that you played against your brother jeff when he was playing for the chiefs and you were playing for the browns you got to play in the kansas city Chiefs stadium as a visitor before you came to play for the Chiefs. So in the lead up to that game, was there some trash talk going on? Were you guys, you know, talk like making predictions about how the game was gonna go? Well, it centered around food. So Saturday night we got together, had some barbecue, oh, yeah. went to Jack Stack. Um, yeah, you must. And, you know, met family and some friends there. So that was the first thing, making sure we got barbecue together. I, you know, we're not very like combative. I mean, or like overly competitive. So we just kind of want the best for each other. And it's awesome that we both play offense so we didn't have to literally like face each other. It was cool to have that experience. Like my mom made the half Chiefs, half Brown shirt. Nice. My parents got to like see us together on the field. We got the photos. So it's more just rooting for each other. Um, but that was the only time we ever got to play each other. So it was a, a one and done and pretty cool that it actually happened in Kansas City. The, the Chiefs were the favorite going into that game because they're undefeated and it was a 
I guess you guys made it competitive. We Only did. lost by six. Yeah, we did. I actually remember that game. So I'm <laughs> glad you said that. Uh, because it's actually easier to play for Cleveland than it is for like Kansas City because teams won't take you seriously. So you don't necessarily get your opponent's best shot every time. Interesting. Where if you're on the Chiefs, like every single time they're bringing it because they want to beat the Chiefs. What's the difference? Like what would you say was the biggest difference being a visiting team and being the home team in Arrowhead? I mean, Especially just, on the offensive line when there's so much communication going yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, that's the answer. As an offensive lineman, it's the noise. Yeah. Uh, when you're playing there as a visitor, you have to deal with the noise. You have to try to hear your center, try to hear your quarterback. Um, again, another sneaky advantage playing for Cleveland, the fans also don't, like, show up as much because it's yeah. not as desirable of a game. So, like, yeah, it's still a packed house. Arrowhead's still loud, but it's not going to be as loud as when Denver comes to town or, yeah. you know, when Buffalo comes to town yeah. now. So, like, you don't get the 100%, you know, 142 decibels, whatever. But it's still loud enough that, like, even at 90%, you just you can't hear. Like, everything, you just have to see people talking. Um, so using that to your advantage when you're playing for the Chiefs is pretty awesome. All right, a little chippy 9-iron. I'm pretty much just going to go right at it. I love this par three. It's such a good hole. Well, that worked. <laughs> I missed that golf ball completely. The shot tracer is going to be fun on that. I don't think it got above my head. No, it worked. <laughs> I think I hit that like. Actually, you can see the ball. The ball didn't even like. One of us. <laughs> one of us. <laughs> yeah, about right there on that one. But we got a nice little birdie look. Get up a little. That's gonna be a fun two putt. Yep. That's gonna be a very fun two putt. You see, see what you gotta do is like almost fully top it <laughs> and just hit like basically a putt with your nine iron right at the flag. So that shot, the chippy nine iron, are you adjusting your backswing? Are you adjusting your tempo? Like your hands, all of it? Like, how do you take uh, speed off and keep it low? Your motion through the ball should be the same every time. It's the, it's the length of your backswing that changes how hard you hit it. Oh, settle. That's the thing about these, when the greens are aerified, if you hit it a little too hard, it just skips over the top of all the holes. I got about a, I'd say like a 15-ish footer here, but got a little bit of fringe to, go, to work with. Oh, slow down. What a read. Bang. Hmm. Good putt there. That's perfect speed. Yeah, it's the best speed I've had today. Thank you. New golf all time. Okay, this is par five. Uh, I actually, I don't know that I've ever played it from this box. We talked, but this is all I was talking about. That car path where it sticks out, that's typically a pretty good line. So where should I be aiming if I hit this? Uh, I like a little, what, what ball flight do you hit? Like a cut, draw? You, I'm you, assuming straight. Okay, then let's go with that bunker. I okay. like that bunker. That's All a good right. line. That gets up a little bit. It should be pretty good. Couldn't see it. I'm gonna try to hit just a mini cut off of uh, where Mitch's ball ended up. Or a draw. That's so deep into the houses. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> that just pounded those trees. I'm going to hit another just in case. Right. I think that's going to be pretty good, actually. I know it doesn't look like it, but that might be good. Yeah, I'm going see. through my list of questions, and you've answered, like, you have indirectly answered a lot of them, which I, you know, you probably got to see coming, I guess. What would you say was your welcome to the NFL moment? Ooh, that's a good one. So, the easy one is I, like, couldn't block the guys I was going up against in practice because they were so good. Okay. <laughs> it was just like... That's got to be scary. Yeah, it's just like, man, like, guys in the NFL are so good. There also was my very first ever NFL play which was an outside zone to my side, no tight end help. I was super excited because, you know, it's literally my first play. We're going against the Eagles, Andy Reid Eagles, 2012. Nice. Jason Babbins, the defensive end, he's a good player. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> so I, I run at him. He, like, 
clubs me by and makes the tackle for a three yard loss. I'm like, okay, maybe the NFL's not for me. <laughs> Literally first play, can't go any worse. 265, wins off the left. Flag is like howling left to right. Looks like it's all fair away from here to there. So I could theoretically hit whatever I wanted. I guess just hit three with and get it as far as I can. So you're watching this, this is not a retake, that's a practice swing. All right, up the left side, should roll a little bit. I found my golf ball. It's not great, but I found it. Um, I actually have a swing, which is sick, but really not a lot of a shot. So I'm just gonna try to get this thing back out into the fairway and hit one close and make a birdie the hard way. Yeah, heads up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, there we go. All right, ball's in play. Oh, 206. This is not what I wanted in this hole in my third shot, but a little into the wind, very soft fairway, a little into the wind, pretty cold. I'm just going to hit a five iron here. Winter rules, I'm playing this up. You can come at me in the comments if you want, or comment below the next NFL player you'd like to see on the channel. That's kind of floating. Might need to go. All right, on the green. We'll take that. Look how long that divot was. That's a five iron. I got about 50 to the pin. I'm gonna try to hit one about 45. Should be close. Hopefully I don't three putt. <laughs> I got about a 30 footer for birdie. Off the tee, I thought I hit one out of bounds. So a 30 footer for birdie actually feels pretty good considering. Am I rubbing off on you? <laughs> the second I hit that, I was like, why did I just hit it like that? Mm. Good par. I'll take it. Thank Easy you. Easy par. Can you fit your hand into a golf hole? Like, actually, no. Like, to grab it? <laughs> that's, that's so insane. This is, uh, yeah, about a 430 yard par four, dead into the teeth of about a 15 mile an hour wind on a 40 degree day, but the sun's out. True. The sun's out. That's good. Hang right there. You might have found the shoot better. of you might have found the shoot of destiny yeah, right there. I'm just gonna start, yeah we're gonna go, we're gonna start this right edge of the bunker. All right, that'll work. Did I lean into the shot tracer there? Perfect. I'm getting better at YouTube golf. And real golf. <laughs> yes, <laughs> improving every day. So hole number six, question number six. The question was gonna be, who is the best defensive lineman you ever faced? And is it the same defensive lineman that you were the most nervous about going into the game? I would have to say yes. So I get asked this question a lot. I usually try to be PC and kind of just say, oh, a lot of guys are good. Probably the best guy I ever faced was like peak J.J. Watt. Like yeah. when I was younger as well. And he was, I think he won with three defensive MVPs in the four or five year stretch and just setting all kinds of records. Like like Von Miller's up there, Joey Bosa's up there, Cleo Max up there. But Watt was 6'5", 300. He would do whatever he wanted. Like if he was supposed to go to the A-gap, he would fake on the A-gap, jump behind and technically be out of the gap, but then he'd make it right. He was so athletic, he could still do that. So he could actually like get distance on you that maybe he doesn't have like the literal quick twitch of Vaughn, but he's covering ground so he can still threaten the corner. And then, you know, he's got all the shake moves, the inside move, like he could do anything he wanted. And kind of like we talked about earlier, the Joe Thomas preparation, like take away what they're best at. Like, how do you take away what he's best at when he's good at eight different things, you know? So you can't go into a game like, I'm going to stop him from doing that. Because if you took a, if you only took away that one thing, he's still a Hall of Famer with seven other things. Yeah. Well, it's essentially, I mean, to put it into golf terms, like, you know, I think JT said, you know, Tiger once told him, like, you don't have enough shots. And, like, yeah. you can be good doing you know, being DJ and just hitting cuts every single time if you are one of the best to ever do it at that thing. But usually what separates guys is being able to do multiple things at an elite level.
Here, I'm just gonna try to get it lower and onto the fairway. I like that. Well, that works too. Where'd it go? Uh, it's in the rough, just short of the fairway, but it's past the trees and I'll have a full shot in. 144, pretty much straight into the wind. Just gonna put a eight iron a little bit back in my stance, hit a bit of a trap draw. Just kind of a chippy eight. Should be the number. All right, should be pretty good. It's 140, but it's into the wind. I got eight. I like it, perfect. Catch a piece. All right, about pin high. Damn, look at that shot. That's a really good two putt. Thank Great you. two putt. Oh, I'll take it. Now that I now that I saw you not be able to fit your hand in the hole, I'm watching you pick the ball up out of the hole differently. You're like having to. <laughs> it's exceedingly difficult to get a ball out of a flag stick hole. Like if it, if the flag is in the hole, it's yeah, like it's just impossible. It's impossible. So it's things you don't think that's, about. That's that's when I'll take the stick out if I'm that close and it's like all right. You're you're staring down a three foot. You're not thinking about like. Oh man, the flag might kick this ball out of the hole. You're thinking about, I'm not gonna be able to get this out of the hole. <laughs> Correct. Although I do know the data, again, 99% of the time you're supposed to have it out. Correct, yeah. Which, uh... Well, I mean, and, and that right there, that's gonna start a war in the comments because there's a million different studies that say a million different things about what you should do with the flag stick. See, normally I would just tee off, but now that he's brought up that we're doing it, whoever has the honors, I gotta wait for him. Taking his time over there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the 350 yard club um, and just like basically go for the green. Cause like we said earlier, if there's also, if there's space, you just do it. Starting it at the left edge of that framing bunker. I'm gonna cut it back a little bit. See if I can get up there near the green. That's probably in the houses. Golly, man. Over the bunker? Those were very, very different directions that we just took. Those were. That should be pretty money. That's perfect. All right, eight iron. This one's will be good. Perfect yardage. So my seventh question is, uh, you probably figured I was going to ask you about this at some point. You obviously had the experience of blocking for a quarterback who's very, like, possibly going to go down as the greatest of all time in Johnny Manziel. What was that like? Yeah, he will go down as atop some leaderboard as the greatest ever to do something. Playing quarterback in the NFL, unfortunately, is not going to be it. The thing with him is, like, we, we loved him. He was an awesome dude in the locker room, like, super cool, all that stuff. I think he had a ton of potential to be a really good quarterback. Just the off-field stuff, just unfortunately took hold a little bit too much. He's someone that probably should still be in the NFL and playing at a pretty good level because I think he had all the kind of on-field ability and the on-field smarts as well. It just, the off-field stuff, you know, once it took hold, it took hold. I anticipate you might've thought I was going a different direction with that, with that question when I first started asking it. The beginning of the question is a lot different than the end of the question. <laughs> yeah, so Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Would you say that, based on what you just said, is he kind of the antithesis of the off-field stuff that you saw with Johnny? What would you say is the biggest difference that you saw between those two massive talents? What do you think has made Mahomes pan out the way that he has? Even on the field, Pat's a step above, like all the, I mean, the arm talent, the velocity, throwing ability, his ability to kind of see the field, know like where the guy is across the field when he's looking to the right. Um, all those things are just at the elite level, but the off-field stuff is really insane. I mean, his mastery of the playbook, and coming from Texas Tech, like it took a while to get a Coach Reed playbook down because, you know, he was doing pretty quick play calls and yeah. if one or two word things and numbers and learning how to spit out a Coach Reed play with a kill and an alert and all this stuff, like it, it takes a while. So his ability to learn that, to, you know, I think those guys, like, they call plays at home to their girlfriend or their wife or in the mirror, like, wow. because that 
cadence, that rhythm, that flow in the huddle is really important. So the studying of the game so that one guy out of all the 11 could be one or two yards off of where they're supposed to be and like that's the tip. And you need to be prepared enough as a quarterback to know that that guy is here instead of here and that's your tip, that this thing's happening on that play. People probably assume quarterback is a difficult position, but I don't think they realize how difficult it is and his mastery of it like this quickly is, yeah, I mean, all the on-field stuff is crazy, but like, like your question, it's the off-field stuff where he's preparing himself to be able to make it subconscious so he's not thinking on the field. Just the way he works is crazy. Oof. Nice. You go, from, you go from thinking you're going to make double to making birdie. That is the best feeling in golf. Comment below if you agree. You know what nice. I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say I knew what you were saying, but uh, usually uh, I, my excitement comes from saving par. So you block. You got. You had an opportunity to block for, for two very different styles of quarterback in Alex Smith and Patrick Mahomes. One is more of a you know pocket presence, more of a traditional quarterback. Yeah. The other being more of a modern quarterback, running around, making plays with his feet. What kind of challenges did you face transitioning from one to the other? So you block for where you expect the quarterback to be on a given play. Yeah. You have the general framework on a normal drop back. He's behind the center. He's nine yards deep, eight yards deep. Okay. So you know the general area to block for. Once you feel your defense alignment running the opposite direction of where you expect the quarterback to be, you know he's broken the pocket. And that's where you get called for holding is where – you still think the quarterback's back there, you feel him disengage, you're locked on, your arms go away from your body, then you yank him back. So in general, you block for where you expect the quarterback to be and you react off of that. And I know it sounds simple, but like that's really all you do. So yeah. nothing, you know, I can't block for Pat in the pocket and out of the pocket. So I have to block for Pat in the pocket and adjust to him being out of the pocket. Same as yes. any other quarterback. Okay, makes sense. Also, speaking of Patrick Mahomes, shout out to Marco Scarola from Scarola Made made this head cover, sent it out to me. This is all handmade, by the way. Like, We're gonna try to get Mitchell a number 71 version of this. This is so cool. Yeah. I just wanted to shout him out. I'm not getting paid at all for this. I just thought this was awesome. No, it's really well done. Uh, well, we got 152 here. If I were to hit a pitching wedge, I'm just afraid of it getting bullied by the wind. So I'm gonna hit like kind of just a low chippy nine. Make sure it gets past the flag. If it spins back, cool. Oh, perfect. I'll take that. Nice shot. You love pin high. Pin high is always good. That was awesome. Pin Heisman, as Luke Juan would say. <laughs> oh, boy. Come on, be the club. Get in the hole. No way. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, the stick is intersecting the ball. Okay, so the closest I've come to a hole in one is number three at Oakwood. I pulled the ball 30 yards left, hit a tree, hit a cart path, rolled down the hill to no joke one foot away. And that was almost my first. One of, one of your feet? One of my feet. Okay. So, you know, closer to 18 inches than 12. So my eighth question was going to be, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the ironic things about being an offensive lineman is you can block for one of the greatest quarterbacks ever, but you don't get to see a lot of the throws that they make because you're always got your back to him. How long into playing with Mahomes did you realize that he was going to be a special player? And do you think it took a little bit longer because you weren't seeing what he was doing? You were just seeing the results? Yes, that's a great question. So anyone this side of Pat Mahomes and Brett Veach probably wouldn't have said that he's going to throw 50 touchdowns and 5,000 yards and win an MVP his first year playing. The first two games his second year, I mean, he throws for 10 touchdowns. We're on the road both of those games. So week three, playing San Francisco at home. The first time he's ever played an arrowhead. He had that really cool play where he's on the run and he throws to Chris Conley in the back of the end zone and it's like this high off the ground. And But like I was literally, Pat's running this way, I was like body blocking the guy to like give him room so I don't see it, you know? Like you said, you don't see it. Yeah. And that was the first time ever in film the next day, our offensive line coach like, yeah. so he actually showed the side angle of that play and said, hey guys, watch 15 on this one. And like the ball just doesn't leave the ground. It's it's so cool. And it's the first time I've ever had a coach like 
watch film from the different angle to highlight how cool something the quarterback did is. We started to do that in film where he would just be like, hey, watch Pat on this one. Check this out. <laughs> and how cool is this? It's like, that's, I mean, that shows you how nuts what he does is that like even a veteran offensive line coach would be like, hey guys, I want you to make sure you see how cool this was. Yeah, just, yeah not, not like this, this pertains to your job. It's just, this is sick. We need to watch this. Yep. <laughs> it's important that we watch and this. And then we started doing with the no look passes and all the other stuff. So that kind of became. I got a, I got about a 12 footer here. I don't see it breaking a ton. I'm just going to try to knock it into the hole because three birdies in a row would be, would be fun, especially on six, seven, eight. That's not really a three hole stretch you typically see a turkey on. They're so slow, man. Oh, you hate to do that. You just forget. I hit so many putts on this green that I run eight feet by. Yep. Wow, that dove. I was rooting for you there, Mitch. I'm not going to lie. I really wanted you to make that. <laughs> That's all right. So this is number nine out here at Shadow Glen Golf. This was the best, like I guess they call it the ninth hole to turn hole. This is the best ninth hole in the country. I feel the wind coming a little bit off the left here. So I'm gonna start this down kind of like right on the right edge of that left bunker and just try to get it to peel back into the fairway. That'll do. I actually don't know if that's going to be in the fairway or not. Oh. All right. You not got the wet. path, got a little bit of love. Not wet, not in a bunker. Uh, so that, I guess that leads perfectly into my final question, which is you spend your entire life working tirelessly to become one of the best in the world at what you love, which is, you know, playing football, being an offensive lineman, and then the thing that I can't relate to, because I've done that my whole life also, but I'm doing it with golf. And golf is something that I can do basically forever. What was the realization like when you realized like your NFL career is probably something that you're gonna have to put in the rear view? And how long did it take after that to find your new obsession, which is obviously golf? Yeah, so it, it happened. So I had back surgery in college between junior and senior year. Played nine years, which as you said, it's more than double the average career. So I played for a long time, but I figured at some point I'd probably have something else going on with my back. You know, I guess theoretically I could still keep trying to play, but you know, every now and again, I still have nerve pain in my legs. Like I, I would say I'm not 100% healed and I don't know if I ever will be. And so is it worth trying to keep playing football? Uh, no. <laughs> and I was lucky in that I won a Super Bowl. I had been all pro. I made a lot of money like I did a, kind of all the things team and individual you would want to do so I felt very fulfilled with my career but then yeah luckily I turned to golf and my back has been healed enough to take that pretty well which is surprising to me <laughs> given that some other stuff makes it hurt but golf seems to be okay and so it scratches the itch of like perfectionist wanting to work I also love like the gear side of it so much more to golf than like hitting a ball and trying to get in the hole yeah. and kind of all facets of it really scratched the itch for me and turns out I love it <laughs> Well, if it is, in the bunker, not in the bunker. Get through. The decision was made for you. You are laying up. <laughs> Never ending supply of information online when no. it comes to golf, which is also a huge problem. I was going to say, it's, <laughs> that's why I like going to someone. I had the same shot I hit last hole, or the same club rather. Yeah, it's a little downhill lie. My advice to you would be try to feel a little more weight on your front foot here because it looked like on that last shot you were trying to stay balanced like don't be afraid to after you hit this shot take a step forward yeah that was so pure look at that there's something really satisfying and i, I mean i don't know if i'm going to be a golf coach in my second second phase of my career but there's something very satisfying about giving somebody a tip and having it work. I mean, that's not to the make best, that about myself, but that's the best contact I've had today. I got 135 here, 70 percenter. Just let it ride the wind a little bit. Hopefully, hit it pin high like Mitch did. Give myself a birdie look. Hmm. Okay. That's really now I gotta good. make a very scary three footer.
All right, yeah. we'll tap in. It's within the distance. Do I have to do an official tap in or a... Ooh, very friendly distance. <laughs> uh. Uh. Mitchell, thank you so Am much. Am I for supposed to take this camera. one off? No, you're good. You don't have, I just. It's now you can flip. see my terrible hair. <laughs> yeah. well, no, that was a great time. I had an awesome time with that. Thank you again for coming on the channel, answering the nine questions, playing nine holes. I had a blast. I learned a ton. Uh, I'm sure if the viewers at home aren't huge football people, they just learned a ton about football. And I think even if you are a big football guy, if you didn't learn something from this man, you didn't listen close enough because clearly very, very knowledgeable in the game. Thanks again for coming on the channel. Yeah, man, this was a lot we're, of fun. We're going to have to do it again. In fact, we're going to do it again right now. We're doing a mulligan challenge. We're still negotiating the number of mulligans, but we're going to play a match. Mitchell's going to get a few mulligans, and we're going to see how close we can make it. Let's do it. All right, sounds fun. Make sure to tune in next week for that one. And subscribe, hit the bell, comment below what you'd like to see next, what NFL player you'd like me to get on the channel after this one. And uh, well, I guess the one they're going to recommend is the one you're not going to be able to get. But make it realistic. <laughs> Are you saying I can't get Patrick Mahomes? I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying good luck with that. Maybe, Maybe when you retire. Maybe in 2042. <laughs>